You're Morning. legendary footballer, <laughs> global ambassador, fashion icon, sex god, and now you're doing travel documentaries. I mean, I there's not really any work for any of the rest of us. Um, but this one, as the title says, David Beckham Into the Unknown, mm -hmm. is something quite new for you, and I think yeah. shows a lot of aspects of your life and what you, your attitudes, which I, I've not seen before. Why this trip at this time? Um, first off, good morning. Sorry, yes. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, should have introduced um, you. Why this trip? Well, to be honest, obviously, I've re everyone knows I retired almost yeah, 11 months ago, uh, 12 months ago. Um, and my life has always been a schedule. You know, wherever I've uh, been for the last 20 years, uh, it's been with a team. Um, and obviously, as everyone knows, when you're in a football team, you know, everything's done for you. Um, from your kit outside your door in the mornings to someone even carrying your passport at times. So that's uh, something that I've kind of always been used to. And obviously I came to the end of my career and I, I've never, I realised I've never kind of done anything like this with friends uh, or been on a trip where kind of I haven't got a schedule. You, you must have spent you know, time away from the family before. Was it different this time because of where you were going and what you might? Um, it kind undertake. of was different because obviously this trip was my choice. Whereas in in the past, where I've gone on, you know, obviously I've always enjoyed the trips that I've gone on when I've been a, yeah. a player. But um, you know, obviously this one was something different. I'd never kind of gone on a boys' trip before, where I'd kind of gone into the unknown, and uh, this was this was exciting. But obviously, as everyone knows, and. I'm sure everyone's the same when you leave your family, you know, even if it's for a day or a night, you know, you always yeah. miss them. So sometimes on these trips, you do have to do something that is a risk and there's a danger involved. Yeah. What goes through your mind? Do you kind of start thinking, should I do this? Will the family let me um, know? If I, I do mean, there was, there was a couple of moments where we had uh, situations like that where yeah. I did think, I never felt, it never felt life threatening, but it mm. always was one of those things where you know, um, I wouldn't want my boys to do it, or no. um, not that I'd be able to stop them probably most of the time. But, uh, you know, even Victoria, Victoria would probably watch this and think, I can't believe you've just done that. So, yeah. Tell us a little bit more about going to that, I say they're really remote people who 50 years ago have probably never seen another white man. So, yeah. what was it like? Well, obviously, part of the story was going to the tribe uh, yeah. and kind of at the end of the trip, trying to find somewhere where I was not recognised. Yeah. Uh, and we found it. You know, when we went into the tribe, I can't lie, I was very nervous uh, mm. because we kind of landed on a, a small plane, four-seater plane, um, and the plane had to land by five o'clock and had to leave by quarter past five, and mm. we were just there. So the fact that we were staying the night, I was, you know, we were all nervous about um, and then walking through, um, kind of going into the, you know, the, their home. Um, did you feel, I mean, when you first met them, did you feel threatened at all or just you didn't quite understand I, what was going on? To be honest, the on? whole time that we, were, the, that we were there, there was one of the tribesmen kind of behind each of us with a machete, kind of. So it was mm. kind of nerve-wracking to start off with. You're used um, to having bouncers, aren't you? Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> You're used to bouncers being around. Oh, I don't yeah. know about that, but it's just, yeah. it's quite kind of nerve wracking yeah. to go into that situation. And yeah. uh, I'd never done that before. Um, mm. So when we first arrived, yeah, it was, I was kind of nervous. Um, but after a while, you know, we sat down, we talked through certain things with, with some of the kids and, mm. um, and some of the adults as well. And, and it was one of those. I mean, life-changing experiences that kind of really was incredible when we sat with them and we talked about, you know, the history of the tribe and how long yeah. the tribe's been around and, and certain things that's happened to the tribes over the, over the last 20, 30 years mm. uh, with the road that was being tried to be built through, through, uh, through their home through their houses yeah. um, and that was that was the amazing thing to just sit down and, and talk with them and and the fact that we were spending the night kind of that kind of thing doesn't happen as you know mm -hmm. so the fact that we'd been welcomed and we stayed in the missionary 
And the, and the funny thing was, we, uh, we, we was told, you know, you know, you have to be careful because, you know, the, the kids come into the houses, they go through yeah. your bags and they try to yeah. find what you have. And it's not like a, a danger thing, it's just they're curious. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we kind of, we got into the missionary late in the evening and we're, we're kind of um, just about going, just going to sleep and you heard little tiny feet outside. Yeah. Um, and the doors were all locked. But we opened, we had the shutters open and all of a sudden, you know, we all fell asleep. And then the next morning we woke up and literally there was like four kids at yes. each window yeah. and, and a couple of adults as well, which was yeah. a little bit scary. Um, and they were just watching us and they were just curious. And it was one of those kind of things that I'd never done before. Um, and there's also a clip on, on the documentary where we do some work with some of the, the women the next morning and, okay. and a couple yeah. of the, the tribesmen as well. Um, and one of the tribesmen turns around to me and he says, you know, you know, where are you from? What do you do? Um, where do you live? How's your, what, what is your, your forest like? You know, do you have monkeys yeah. in your forest? Um, so I was kind of explaining, yeah. it, you yeah. know, we, we, we only have monkeys kind of in the zoos. <laughs> yeah. um, and then he turned around to me and said, well, you know, what do you do as a job? Um, and I said, well, I was a soccer player. Um, and he said, what's that? And that's obviously the first yeah. time I've ever had to explain what yeah. soccer is to, really? to anybody besides yeah. Victoria. Um, <laughs> so kind of that's the only uh, yeah. kind of thing that, that really kind of happened. And it really it made me laugh. But you know, I did mm. my best to kind of explain Mm. what football is. Um, I didn't do a very good job, but um, it was it's, funny. W w was that the sort of, the final feeling you had about the journey, that you could, that you'd really gone somewhere very different and you could behave in a different way and react in a different way? Or was it just something that was, you've done it and that's that? It was just refreshing. It was, the, yeah. the, whole, the whole journey was refreshing for me, you know, to go on so many different, um, kind of uh, travels along the way, you know, mm. each, day, each day changed, you know, the fact that we were sleeping in hammocks, you know, every single yeah. night was, was a struggle for, my, for myself on the first night, well, it was <laughs> a struggle for all of us because um, the only time I've been in a hammock is with the kids on, on holiday, so yeah. the fact that I had to sleep in a hammock um, actually was one of the difficulties on the first night, I had yeah. about... 20 minutes sleep on the first night because the second night because no one actually explained to me oh, how right. you should sleep in a hammock um, what so were you I doing kind of, wrong <laughs> you were probably, uh, apparently you, well you can um, go diagonally and oh, also yes. you can kind of sleep like a frog yeah which uh, you wouldn't I ended want to up do that. doing on the second <laughs> night but uh, yeah the first night was definitely yeah. a struggle but talking about the tribe as well there was one uncomfortable moment where you'll see on the documentary where one because they don't <clears throat> usually wear clothes obviously mm. they the kids and some of the yeah. women had shorts on and for, for our for mm. our kind of uh, visit but there was one moment where we sat in the fields where we was uh, kind of slicing the vegetables up and there was one of the the tribesmen that was completely painted in in black and had no clothes on yeah. and I was sat down and all of a sudden I've looked up and kind of was he, he was in my eye line yes yeah. Um, yeah and there's a really uncomfortable moment and he's <laughs> trying to talk to me and he's talking to me about certain <laughs> things and kind of he didn't yeah. kind of come down to my the same level he was just stood, well, we won't stood get into above that. me yeah. and uh, yeah. it was it's a funny moment because yeah. I'm trying to look everywhere apart yeah. from where my eye line uh, <laughs> would have been but um, you know it was it was really incredible really yeah. well the the real question is would you would you do any more like this would you like to travel again in these kind of situations in this kind of quite dangerous and difficult circumstances. Without a doubt, without a doubt. It's one of the things that I wanted to <clears throat> kind of take from, from, from this trip and this journey mm. that kind of I've put myself into a, a situations which I've never done before. Um, and mm. it, it excited me, it unnerved me, but it was, it was really life-changing. It was something that me and my friends will will never forget yeah. and uh, as everybody knows you know I've been ambassador of UNICEF for 10 years now 
Um, and yeah. I've been I never I've never really been able <coughs> to actually go into the field and um, really kind of take advantage of of you know kind of having the time yeah. that I have now. So this is definitely something that I'd like to yeah. continue doing, and uh, it was it was really an amazing experience. Well, that's good news for us all. I'll give you some addresses because I know some wonderful <laughs> okay, places. Good to know. 